Hi everyone, isn't this a cool piece of art? It was made by a man named Victor Vasserly, and I want to tell you a little bit more about him today. He was born in 1906 and he lived to 1997, and he was a French-Hungarian artist, and he was known for starting what's called the op art movement. Op art is an abstract art style that looks like optical illusions, and he was a firm believer in how you can use exact geometric principles to make these kinds of optical illusions. So I'm going to show you how to make something similar to what we just looked at. I have a piece of paper, I have a ruler, a pencil, and I have a bowl that I'm going to trace in the middle for my circle. So you can watch and see how this goes. We're going to give it a shot. First I'm going to trace this circle in the middle. Then I'm going to make a grid on, the back, on this paper here, which is a standard printer paper. So it's nine, sorry, eight and a half inches by 11 inches. So on this side, I'm gonna do it in inches. So I'll do every inch I'm gonna make a mark, which is off the screen. Let me slide up a little. And I'm gonna end up making a grid behind my circle. So this side, this way is gonna be easy because it's exactly 11 inches across. I have a stack of papers. I'm going to move the extras out of the way. All right, here we go on this side. The other side will be okay if I do inches also. It just will be a half an inch extra on one side. All right, let's connect these first. I haven't told my family I'm making this video, so if we have any interruptions, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now, if I get to a, a part of that circle, I'm gonna stop my pencil line and then continue on beyond the circle like that. See how that works? Uh-oh, hold on, that's our dinner. Hold on a sec. Okay. Almost there. Okay, last one. I'll go the other way. So on this side, I'm going to measure from this corner, and I'm still going to do one inch because I want to make those squares in my grid. So it'll be, see there's an extra half an inch. So I have to make sure I start at the same side of the top. So in fact, I'm just going to hold it right here to make sure that I have, I'm starting on the same side. Otherwise, it would be all off and the lines wouldn't end up straight. All right, let's connect these. I'm really excited to do this. I've never done it before and it looked really cool when I learned about it. So I'll look out for the circle and keep going. I think that it would be helpful if you had a compass to do this work for the next step. I don't have one. Oops, that was a little off. I don't have one, so I'm gonna have to just eyeball it, which means do it by hand without using a measuring tool. I'm gonna fix this line. There. But when you do it, maybe you'll see if you have something like that. You can ask your parent. Weird, see how we started like that? How? This isn't centered in the grid, but I think it'll be okay. Could be more cool if it were centered, but we don't know. Let's see what it turns out like. So here's the grid. Oh, a little wiggly. And the next step involves connecting these sides 
in a way that's a little curved. And I'm just gonna do what I said, I'm gonna eyeball it a little bit. So I'm gonna curve up and down. And this one too. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Let's see, that one's right there. Down and up. And this one I'm going to just go up a little bit. Make a video. Okay, now we're going to go this way. Victor Vasserly, I'm sure, used a measuring tool. And so his is going to look a little cooler than mine. The oven's all yours, by the way. All right. Last one. Okay, still gonna look pretty awesome. So then you take a marker, which I didn't mention that I had, but here it is. And you're gonna color in every other square, even though these aren't exactly squares. This is another video where you might decide, okay, get the idea, you might turn it off. You might wanna run and get some paper and get your materials and get started on it and work at the same time as me. I don't think I'll have you sit for watching me do the entire thing, but I'll just do some of it so you get the idea. Now see how there's a little piece of my square that's on the outside of the circle and I'm gonna color that in too. a little bit. It's okay. I'm not using underlay. Have to check and make sure your surface, if you're using markers, you might want to have something under there. If you don't have an underlay at home, you can use some scrap paper or newspaper or something like that. All right, let's do this part too. I wonder if I could have used my bowl, if I could have, to make the lines. Maybe at least that one, maybe not the second one, but for some of the lines. Maybe I could have found other rounded objects in my house that I could have used to make the lines. See how this square is gonna extend onto the straight grid. Oh, I missed this corner and my dog has to go out. Hold on one second. Okay, I have to fill that part in. Isn't that neat? I see how that's turning out. Let's see, where should I go next? Maybe I'll go here. You can choose your own pattern of coloring in the squares too. I'm just doing every other, but you could choose to use several different colors. paint, 
colored pencils. I think I might prefer paint because it's a lot of coloring in. And I'm impatient about using markers sometimes. You can cut off anytime you want if you don't want to continue watching, but I'm just enjoying finishing this and so you might as well if you feel like staying here with me. I'm just gonna keep doing it. This is looking very cool. avoiding this square because it's so much coloring. Even though I'm not coloring them in all the way, you still can really get the effect of what I'm doing, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. You could keep going, but isn't that pretty neat? I think I should probably stop there. You've been with me a long time, but I'm really tempted to color in these in different colors. Maybe I could do a diagonal of yellow and a diagonal of purple, or who really knows? You could do so many different things with this. I hope you've had a lot of fun learning how to make some sort of optical illusion like Victor Vasserly, and I can't wait to see what you do. I have some other techniques that we can use to make other optical illusion art, and so I will post those another time. Have fun.